Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we got all the initial parts out of the way. In other words, we figured out the steady state voltage. We, start, we figured out the initial voltage, the initial current. We found alpha and omega sub naught. We found the derivative of the voltage with respect to time when time was equal to zero. And we related alpha to omega and determined that it was an overdamped case. So now we're ready to calculate the voltage with respect to time, which is now part two. And remember that the voltage will be both the transient voltage added to the steady state voltage. Of course, the steady state voltage is already known. But since we are dealing with an overdamped case, the equation is going to look like this. The voltage with respect to time is going to be the transient state, which is A1 e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t plus the steady state voltage. And so that means we're going to need to find S1 and S2. We can find S1 and S2 as follows. S1 and S2 is going to be equal to minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. So in this case, alpha is 2.5, so that's minus 2.5 plus or minus the square root of 2.5 squared minus 2 squared. Now 2.5 squared is 6.25, minus 4 is 2.25, the square root is 1.5. So we could say that S1, S2 is equal to um, minus 2.5 plus 1.5, and it is minus 2.5 minus 1.5. So in other words, we could say that S1 equals minus 1 and S2 equals minus 4. Now that we know the values for S1 and S2, we can plug those into the equation and we can say that the voltage with respect to time is equal to A1 e to the minus t plus A2 e to the minus 4t plus 24 for the steady state voltage. So now what we can do is we can set that equal to zero and solve for A1 and A2. And we know that the initial voltage equals four, so V initial equals four, which is equal to this equation when T equals zero. That makes this equal to one, makes this equal to one, and we have plus 24, so that gives us A1 plus A2 plus 24, or minus 20, equals A1 plus A2. Of course, that's not enough. We need one more equation to solve for A1 and A2. So to do that, we're going to take the derivative of this. So dV dt is equal to minus A1 e to the minus t minus 4A2 e to the minus 4t. And the derivative of 24, of course, is equal to zero. All right, now when we set that equal, when we set time equal to zero, that's equal to 16. So the dv dt, when time is equal to zero, is equal to 16, which is equal to this equation when we set t equal to zero. So in this case, that's equal to minus a1 minus 4a2. If we now add the two equations together, we get minus four is equal to the a, one drops out, and we have minus 3a2, which means that a2 is equal to 4 thirds. Of course, when a2 is equal to 4 thirds, we can solve for a1. a1 is equal to minus 20 uh, minus a2. So that's going to be equal to minus 20 minus 4 thirds, which is equal to, uh, let's see here, minus 21 and a third, which can also be written as minus 4 thirds times 16, because that's 48 over 3, and that would be 21, that would be 48, 20, that would be 40, 64, 64, yep, that was the same thing, all right. Okay. So now we have A1, we have A2, we can now plug those into our equation right here. So when we rewrite that, now we can say that V 
of t, the voltage with respect to time is equal to a1. Now a1 is 4, let's see, it's uh, minus 4 thirds times 16. Minus 4 thirds times 16, e to the minus t. a2 is 4 thirds plus 4 thirds e to the minus 4t plus a steady state voltage of 24. And here we now have the equation of the voltage with respect to time of the circuit we have over here, which means that this is the transient portion of the voltage and this here is the steady state portion of the voltage. And of course, when T becomes very large, both of these will go to zero and we're left with just a steady state voltage. And that is how it's done. No, nope, but before you turn it off, let me check. Yep, that is not correct. What was it 